Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen, a First Chapter Friday read aloud video with the word nerd. Today, as you listen, watch for the story quote that will appear on screen. Write it down word by word and then follow the instructions given to you by your teacher. Stick around to the end of the video to check and see if you were right. Hey everybody, my name is Amanda Ziva. Welcome to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd, and another First Chapter Friday video. This week I'm going to be reading to you from A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This is the second book by Jennifer I've read on this channel. Last year I shared with you one of my favorites of all time, The False Prince, and when I read this book I got to interview Jennifer. There's not an interview with this video, but if you want to hear about this writer's uh, writing process and some behind the scenes stories, um, you can totally check out this video, which I'll be sure to link in the description box. But today we're going to talk about this other fabulous book by Jennifer A. Nielsen, A Night Divided. This book falls into the genre of historical fiction. Now let's break that down a little bit. Fiction means it's a made-up story, and historical means that it takes place surrounding a real thing that happened in the past. I personally love historical fiction stories because not only am I entertained by a great story, but I also get to learn a little bit of something as I'm reading the story. So it's really interesting as you're reading a historical fiction story to figure out like what were the true things that really happened and what did the author make up for the main character. It's kind of a fun little game I play for myself and I usually, after I read a historical fiction novel, go back and do some research of my own to see what was true and what was made up for the story. Usually in historical fiction books, most most authors have this actually in every book that they write, but um, you know they always do the acknowledgements at the end, thanking everyone who helped them with the story. But a lot of times in historical fiction books, they'll also have an author's note that tells you about their research process um, and how they wrote the story. So um, go back and check in other historical fiction novels and also in this one, and you'll get some great information about the time period that you just read. But for right now, let's dive into this book, A Night Divided. Here's what the blurb on the back of the book says. With the sudden rise of the Berlin Wall, 12-year-old Gerda finds her family divided overnight. She, her mother, and her brother Fritz live on the eastern side, controlled by the Soviets. Her father and middle brother, who had gone west in search of work, are unable to return home. Gerda knows it is dangerous to watch the wall, to think forbidden thoughts of freedom, yet she can't help herself. She sees the East German soldiers with their guns trained on their own citizens, watching for any sign of escape. Gerda, her family, her neighbors and friends are prisoners in their own city. But one day Gerda spots her father on a viewing platform on the western side of the wall, pantomiming a peculiar dance. She concludes that her father wants Gerda and Fritz to tunnel beneath the wall out of East Berlin. However, if they are caught, the consequences will be deadly. No one can be trusted. Will Gerda and her family find their way to freedom? Um, I will tell you that as I read this book out loud to my own students, uh, we read the whole thing, not just the first chapter, throughout the course of a semester. Um, and we were like hanging on the edge of our seats. It was so tense and suspenseful. Um, and if you're looking for a book that will do that for you, A Night Divided is absolutely it. So let's dig into chapter one, A Night Divided. <clears throat> there was no warning the night the wall went up. I awoke to sirens screaming throughout my city of East Berlin. Instantly, I flew from my bed. Something must be terribly wrong. Why were there so many? Although it was a warm morning, that wasn't the reason for my sweaty palms or flushed face. My first thought was that it must be an air raid. My parents had described them to me from the Second World War. I pulled my curtains apart expecting the worst, but when I looked out, my heart slammed into my throat. Not even the darkest part of my imagination could have prepared me for this. It was Sunday, August 13th, 1961, a day I would remember for the rest of my life, when a prison had been built around us as we slept. Lines of Grenzers, our nickname for the border police, the Grastupen, stood guard along the fence of a thorny wire, in some places higher than their heads and for as far as the eye could see. They stood like iron statues with stern expressions and long rifles in their hands. It was obvious that anyone who tried to cross would get far worse than a rip in their clothes, because the Grenzers didn't face the Westerner Westerners on the other side of the fence. They watched us. It was very clear who they planned to shoot if there was any trouble. 
If only I'd looked out earlier. During the night, I'd heard strange noises of hammering, heavy footsteps, and hushed conversations from men with sharp voices, but I rolled over and told myself it was only a dream, or a nightmare, perhaps. If I had looked, I could have warned my family in time, just as our neighbor Herr Krauss tried to warn us. He knew this was coming. Hadn't he said for years that our government was not to be trusted? That we might salute the flag of East Germany, but that it was really Russia we bowed to? And my father had known. My father. As if she had heard my thoughts from out in the kitchen, I heard Mama cry, Aldous! That was his name. And with a final glance out the window, I remembered the reason for Mama's screams. Father wasn't here. Neither was my brother Dominic. They had been in the West for two nights and were supposed to have come home later today. With an endless row of guns and soldiers between us, the fence just changed that. I raced from my room and arrived in the kitchen to see my oldest brother, Fritz, holding my mother in his arms as she sobbed on his shoulder. He eyed me and then cocked his head toward the window in case I hadn't already seen the fence. I only brushed tears from my eyes and wrapped my arms around her back. Maybe she didn't need me, but in that moment, I desperately needed her. She felt me there and put a shaking hand on my arm. They've done it, Gerda, she said through her tears, worse than anyone ever thought. Mom had been a beautiful woman once, but that was years ago. She had come through too much war and famine and poverty to care about the curl in her hair or the neatness of her dress. Her blonde hair was already turning gray and her eyes broke, bore the early wrinkles and the creases. Sometimes I looked in the mirror and hoped life would not be equally hard on me. Why now, I asked. Why today? I looked up to Fritz for an answer. He was nearly six years older than me and the smartest person I knew. Next to my father, if my mother had no answers, then surely he did. But all he could do was shrug and hold her tighter as her sobs grew louder. Besides, I already understood more than I wanted to. The fence was only the beginning. It had just divided my life in half, and nothing would ever be the same again. I know this is just a teeny tiny bite-sized piece of this amazing story, but hopefully it's enough to make you want to pick up a copy from your school library, purchase one from your local indie bookstore, and if you can't find it there, you can always find it in the description box below. Thanks so much for joining me for First Chapter Friday. I hope you find all the other videos on my channel helpful and uh, edu edutational, edutainment, education, I don't know. I hope you love them and that you'll come back again next time. Please subscribe and like this video, and I'll see you again. Happy reading! To continue reading A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen, pick up a copy from your school library, purchase one from a local indie bookstore, or grab it via the link in the description box. Then be sure to check out the rest of the First Chapter Friday videos on my playlist and the other great videos I have for you on my channel. This week's mystery quote says, Courage isn't knowing you can do something, it's only being willing to try. Please like this video and subscribe, and then check out the rest of the great content I have for you online, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, my website, or Teachers Pay Teachers.